So I'm going to start a little mini series this year on this channel. This is the first episode and it's been led by two things, two factors, everyone. Number one, one of my goals this year is to read at least four classics, which might not sound that difficult, but for a girly who is like petrified of reading classics because of how long they are, because of the like intimidation factor, many, many, many a thing. I never read them. <laughs> Maybe I read one last year, but I read one last year that was Emma by Jane Austen and I absolutely loved it. So I want to read more classics. And also I've realized I own a shit ton of retellings. I own so many retellings, but for the vast majority of these retellings, I have never read the classic. And so it kind of feels a little bit like, oh, what's the point in me reading this? Am I getting the full benefit of reading this retelling and the interesting thing the author's doing with the original story if I have not read the original story? Probably not. There's a few of my TBR that I think are loosely inspired by and that's a bit different, but there's quite a lot of books that are like, this is a retelling of this book. And so in this little mini series, I'm probably gonna be doing about four or five episodes of this throughout the year. We are gonna be reading a classic and then it's retelling and pitting them against one another and seeing which one's better, but also seeing does the classic stand up? Is the classic an enjoyable read for me in the present day? Does the retelling do something interesting with the original and flip it in an interesting way? So that's what we're gonna be doing. And the classic that we're gonna be reading for this first episode is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. <laughs> This is like a five star prediction. I thought this was the best one to start us off with because I have exhibited that I love Jane Austen's writing in Emma and I've spoken about this many times, we don't need to talk about it again, but Pride and Prejudice is an incredibly formative story for me in terms of, I read this when I was younger. I have not read this probably in like 15 years, but I read this when I was younger and the BBC adaptation, Pride and Prejudice, I watched every single time I was sick off school. That is what I watched. It, it, it raised me. <laughs> Mr. Darcy. It's the reason I am who I am today. It's the reason that I love Grump Sunshine romances. And so I thought this would be a really fun way to ease myself into this, ease myself into reading more classics and probably be a great one to start with. And I am so excited for the retelling we're gonna be reading as well, which is Pride and Premeditation by Terza Price. This is a murder mystery. This is just the perfect start to this series, right? It's like a little mini series. This isn't a big series. It's like a little, little mini series. Um, this is the perfect start because this is a murder mystery where Lizzie and Darcy are like both lawyers and they're both tasked with solving this crime. Oh. <laughs> Are we just so excited? I cannot wait to do this video. I think this is gonna be such a fun experiment and then we've got a few really interesting ones. Let me know if there's any classics and retellings you think would be interesting. I've got at least four, I think, on my TBR where I've got a classic and a retelling, so that's gonna be fun. But in all these, I'm gonna read the classic first. So I'm gonna start Pride and Prejudice today. I cannot promise I will not just get entirely carried away and like, want to read this entire book today. I've got a little bit of work to do. I've got some patron prep uh, for our quiz night to do. But after that, all I'm doing is reading this and I cannot promise I will not just read this entire thing today. So shall we begin? I will see you once I've gotten a little bit of the way through. Maybe I'll check in when I'm like a hundred pages in. But this is a story I know, I feel like I know like the back of my hand. So I'm very excited to see what it's like reading this for the first time in ages. I feel like this is a treat. I feel like this is like a wonderful spring day. I feel like I'm living my best life. I cannot wait to absolutely devour this book. I am, I can't describe to you how excited I am. So let's just dive in. I feel so happy. <laughs> Good evening, friends. I'm 100 pages into Pride and Prejudice. I'm loving it! I am loving it! I'm loving it. I am, uh, excuse me, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna collapse. No, I don't, I feel faint. I've struck gold, ladies. I 
am obsessed with this already. I do I have to give you a synopsis of Pride and Prejudice? Like, do I have to like be like, this book is about For me, it's so deeply ingrained into my consciousness as like Santa. Like the story of Santa. Like the story of Pride and Prejudice. I just can't imagine like someone existing in the world not knowing what this is about. We got Lizzie and Darcy. Lizzie is living in her family. She's got five. It's her and five four other sisters? Yeah, her and four other sisters, and basically their whole estate is being inherited by their cousin. So like they, when their father dies, they're not in a good financial situation. So their mother is wanting to marry them all off. And Mr. Bingley, who's a rich dude, comes to town and she's trying to pair off one of her daughters to him, but he also has a friend called Mr. Darcy. They're coming from London into the countryside. Mr. Darcy's even more rich, but they, him and Lizzie meet and she sees him as in incredibly prideful, stuck up, up himself, horrible man. But like, he's in love with her. <laughs> I believe in love. And I just can't tell you how fun it is to be back with Jane's writing. I am loving it. It's interesting. I feel like the narration in this is a little bit more distant, perhaps not so much now, but at the beginning I felt like it was a little bit more distant than than Emma, just in terms of like how we're not as much in Lizzie's head as I feel like we're in Emma's head. Or none of them are written like from their perspective, but like you have a certain degree of closeness from the omniscient narrator to the main character. And I feel like we're not as in Lizzie's head as I was expecting. Again, a lot of my preconceptions are through that BBC adaptation. And in that, I feel like we're definitely viewing everything through Lizzie's eyes almost. And so it was just interesting being a bit distant from her in, in this book. I feel like we're getting more of Darcy's perspective in the book. Like he's obsessed with her. He is so in love with her. <laughs> and I feel like you get some elements in this show, like him talking about her eyes, like how nice her eyes are or whatever. But in the show, the, he, you kind of, for a little while, like you know he's in love with her, obviously, but like he's not showing it as much. Whereas in the book, this man is lusting after this woman. He is obsessed with her. He is like in denial of his <laughs> obsession. So it's just interesting. That different dynamic is very interesting, but it's still so funny. Oh my God, it's still so funny. Like Emma is arguably more of like a comedy from Jane Austen. So that's like very funny in my opinion but there's still moments in this oh my god the characters of miss mrs bennett of mr collins like these are such funny jane is sitting there at her little desk and her little chair and just writing the greatest works of fiction ever to be written i'm i'm deadly serious i'm deadly serious it is brilliant english literature and i don't care what anybody it is it's lit it should be taught in schools the back and forth between them like their little lizzie and darcy when they're chatting a little like teasing oh my god i love it it's so much fun knowing this story so well i can picture every single scene in my brain from the book and sometimes that's like a hindrance right but it's just so it's like coming home it's like a warm hug i love it so much i'm having so much fun reading it i'm genuinely obsessed it's gonna be a five star <laughs> <laughs> having the best time, the best reading experience reading it. It's just fascinating, fascinating reading this book, but just what, oh guys, I just love Jane Austen. And I often wonder what it would be like if she'd live longer, because she died so young. Like if we had more of her books, because we only have a few, right? Like we have Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Persuasion. Is there any more? Is there one I'm forgetting? Mansfield Park. And then we have Sanderton, which is the one she started. Like, but there's not many books when you think about it. And I just wonder, like, what would the world be like if we had more Jane Austen books? You know what I mean? I'm gonna have to go back and read all of her shit, aren't I? I'm gonna have to go back and read, like, the stuff she wrote when she was a kid that's been published. I'm just... Oh, Janie, I love ya. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna go get ready for bed. I don't know how much more I'll read tonight, um, but hopefully a little bit more. But, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. It's just so... I can't tell you how wonderful this is. And it's so fun reading a classic when it's Janie. You know what I mean? I'm scared of doing this. Like, I don't know if I'm going to do another one of Jane Austen in this series. I don't think so. I'm scared of how the others will compare because I just love... <sighs> oh, anyways, I'll see you in the morning once I've read some more. I'm going to read this very fast. I will finish this tomorrow. Like, I'm, I can't... I don't want to do anything other than read this book. So, um, what a wonderful, wonderful time I'm having. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Morning. Everyone say hello to the cats. They're sitting where I was gonna sit to fill the clothes. <laughs> How you doing? Am I annoying you?
Yeah, okay. Good morning, friends. I come to tell you that I am about 260, 270 pages through Pride and Prejudice. I'm still loving it. I'm having the best day reading this. Like, we're so sorry to be here, seriously, but I, this is the dream. I'm genuinely having the time of my life. I, <laughs> this is so much fun to read. Jane Austen's writing is just impeccable. The way that things are shown and not told to us, the way there's all these different characters with like different motivations and different underlying characteristics is so interesting and it's so much fun to get to spend such a long amount of time with it this is you know i constantly think again i'm gonna not shut up about the bbc adaptation of fred and prejudice oh bless you but like that has six hours right to do this justice which i feel like it does there's a few moments where i'm thinking back to it and i'm like oh we didn't spend as long in that situation or whatever but you know how on earth does this Kira Knightley film that you all love, I refuse to watch it by the way, I'm not, I refuse, I've never seen it, I refuse to watch it. How does it, how does it capture the depth of what's going on here? Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. There's so many scenes, there's such a passage of time, there's so many moments that happen, how does it even begin to capture that? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't understand how it's even possible. We just got up to the point where, I mean, can I give spoilers for Pride and Prejudice? It is like 200 years old, but like, I want those of you who haven't read it to still read it. But we've got to a point where, let me talk around it. Darcy asks Lizzie something that doesn't go very well. And uh, then she gets a letter from him. And that letter is such an interesting turning point in the book because it really marks a shift. Me and my mum were talking about this last night. It marks the shift of what she thinks of him like her her opinion of Darcy is very much like and then this letter comes and it starts improving whereas his opinion of her is kind of like steady maybe increasing throughout the book but like hers is a much more abrupt change and it's just interesting that having just happened oh my god the window cleaner's here can he see me filming I think he kind of can um <laughs> for all, it's kind of this is awkward <laughs> how humiliating and degrading. So yeah, anyways, I think it's just a fascinating book. I just wish we had more Jane Austen books. Like I need to, sorry, that's the window washing sound. He's washing the upstairs windows. He's like from a distance, but I think he can, I don't know. He might not, he probably can't see me. Anyways, um, <laughs> no the fact that thousands of people online can see me. If the window cleaner guy can see me, that's more embarrassing than, you know. <laughs> you guys watching the video anyways yeah i just wish we had, like how am i supposed to ration these like i've now i don't count having read persuasion because i just don't think i read it at a time when i appreciate it enough i read it when i was first getting back into reading and what i did back then was i went to the charity shop and i just bought loads of like secondhand books that like i th i thought i should love it was before i'd rediscovered booktube and i got like atonement Persuasion, Wolf Hall, um, like Zadie Smith books, like so stuff that really isn't to my taste now, or like some of it isn't to my taste. And so I think I wasn't, I was kind of like not in tune with what I was reading. So I just think I read it at the wrong moment. Whereas now, oh yeah, I'm absolutely obsessed with this. <laughs> I mean, my Jane doesn't hear us. Like I've only really read two, let's say, Emma and Pride and Prejudice. Like how am I supposed to, to ration the rest of these for my entire life? That's a real, it's a, really, it's a real concern. <laughs> concerned about it um so yeah I'm definitely gonna finish this today I'm gonna go edit a little bit of this video now while I'm still like editing is a morning activity for me you know it's not an evening activity for me so I'm gonna edit some of this and then carry on reading this even though I don't want to edit I just want to carry on reading this but I know it's the responsible thing to do I have also received a parcel which I think is from one of my patrons Danielle on the reading sprints last night she said that she'd sent me something but couldn't put a um might go get scissors couldn't put a message so, and I got this parcel like the day before yesterday um, and I was gonna save it to open in a vlog because I figured I haven't ordered anything. So I always like to open these in a vlog so that whoever saw, sent it, I'm trying to open these without scissors. <laughs> whoever sent it can see me open it. Um, okay, I think I'm in. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm like Wonder Woman. Anyways, what is it? <gasps> I knew just from the back. I knew just from the back. Oh my God, guys. Oh my gosh. Danielle has sent me Miss Laid in Parts Half Known by Shauna Maguire. Oh my god. I am so excited. This is next in the Wayward Children series. Oh my god, Danielle, thank you so much. That is so beyond sweet of you. I'm gonna have to go message her now. That is so beyond sweet of you. This is the next in the Wayward Children series. There's Blimmin' Dinosaurs, baby. Oh my god, I'm so excited. 
good. And this one I think is more so than any we've had in the series, really a continuation of the previous book. A lot of them have been kind of isolated stories, but I really feel like this one is kind of gonna take a lot of what happened in the previous book and kind of continue on with it, which is very exciting. So, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to read this. Thank you, Daniel. that is so kind. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's so exciting. That's one of my most exciting books of the year. Oh my gosh. Oh! <laughs> Robert, isn't that exciting? Yeah, I know. I am gonna go finish Pride and Prejudice. I'll let you know when I finished it, but like, this is gonna be five stars. I am having the most wonderful time reading this and I'm so glad that I'm doing a few of these videos this year to really prioritize reading classics because this is just, I'm having the best time. I'm having the best time. <laughs> I finished it. I'm giving it five stars. I'm giving it five stars. I'm like, I can't. Oh my god, I'm like getting heart palpitations. Like my chest hurts because of my love for this book. Oh my god, you don't even you can't even begin to understand. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. I love this. This is probably my favorite book of the year so far. I don't think that's too crazy to say. Like I haven't had many super standouts. Even the five stuff I had have been like. Some of them have been like, you know, just five stars. This is my favorite book of the year so far. I loved it, but some of that is because of how nostalgic it is to me, right? I just can't believe that this book has traversed like 200 years and is still so pertinent to humanity. And I said the same thing about Emma. Like, I can't believe how touched in on like human nature Jane Austen is. Of course there's elements that are different. Like, you know, we don't marry the same and like whatever, but the, the core of how we feel and how we love and how we react to things, and even the language of it. I just can't, I can't believe it. I loved it so much, you guys. I just, it was such an incredible reading experience. I just adored it. I, I I love it. And Jane Austen, oh my god, some of the one-liners that lady pulls out are absolutely <laughs> heart-wrenching. Like she'll, like Mr. Darcy will say something and I'll just be like, uh, uh, <laughs> Me whenever Mr. Darcy tells Lizzie he loves her. That was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. Oh my god. Like how does she do it? How does she write like that? Like towards the end, there were little moments. There were little lines. And I was just like, oh my giddy aunt. <laughs> I did not expect <laughs> to be feeling this much. I, I think it's incredible. I don't want to say the writing's incredible. Jane Austen, the woman that you are, I'm gonna get even deeper into my Jane Austen obsession. <laughs> another, th another thing I do think is interesting about this is I think it shows Lizzie in a different way than I've experienced. Her. Sorry, why does this camera always go pink in this? <laughs> this angle um it showed lizzie in a perspective i didn't experience her before i feel like in the show you're you're very much from her vantage point so she's always right but i saw the prejudice side of it and of course that's always there but i really did see you know spoiler alert mr darcy's a pride and she's the prejudice and um i really saw that from her this time and i thought that was very interesting i love the sisterly relationships her and jane's relationship i love I love, you know, also you see, I think in the show, you see Mr. Bennett as like, oh my God, he is like the good parent and Mrs. Bennett as the bad parent. But like, Mrs. Bennett has a reason for being so desperate to want to get their daughters married. It's because arguably Mr. Bennett was kind of irresponsible with preparing them for a stable financial future. So I think it's just interesting to see an even more three-dimensional angle of these characters than what I've seen before. And at the end, it ends, the last chapter is like a, you know at the end of the film, it's like where they are now, and there'll be like a line on where, or the end of a TV show, like where everyone is now, like there's a little line for everyone in the story, like how they, how they are at the end of the book or in the years to come, and I love that, like little, Jane is the inventor. Did anyone do that before her? <laughs> I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. Did she invent the like, where are they now moment? I'm sure someone did that before her. But in my mind, Jane is the earliest example I've seen and thus she is the inventor. I love women in STEM. <laughs>
I adored this. I adored this. I don't know what else there is to say. I cannot recommend this enough. I love Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen. And now I'm realizing perhaps when I love the classics, it's not exactly fair on the retelling. I'm not gonna judge these on the same you know, the same purposes because they're trying to do very different things. Um, this isn't trying to be, you know, a work of fiction that lasts hundreds of years. Well, I know, there's a price might be trying to do that. But what it is more trying to do is pay homage and and share the love of something we all love, right? That's why we like retellings or or to take the concepts in a, not, maybe not in this example, but to take the concepts in a classic and twist them and reimagine them, right? Retellings are always trying to do something different. So I'm not gonna try and judge this <laughs> on the same par necessarily, but I am still really, really excited to start it. I'm gonna start it tonight. I'm gonna dive straight in and I'll let you know when I'm a little bit the way to do what I'm thinking, but I feel like this is such a fun, way to read, to read a classic and then read the retelling. I'm so excited to experience this, having just experienced the entirety of this and it be so fresh in my brain. It feels like when you read a series back to back, right? It's like such a fun reading experience. And at the end of the day, reading should be fun. Reading should be fun. So I'm gonna start this tonight. I think this is gonna be a pretty quick read. So I've wanted to read this for so, so long. So I'm so excited to be finally getting to it. Oh my goodness. Good morning, friends. I am about halfway through Pride and Premeditation by Terza Price, and I have some thoughts. <laughs> oh no, this has now gone downhill. It's still set in the Regency era, as far as I can tell. And Lizzie wants to work at her father's law firm, but because she's a girl, Mr. Collins is set to inherit after him. And like, she is not really getting a chance. So she's trying to prove herself by looking into this case where Mr. Hurst, who if you remember from Pride and Prejudice, he is the husband of one of Mr. Bingley's sisters, has been murdered and Mr. Bingley has been arrested for the murder, very dramatic. She she goes to try and wants to represent him, but it turns out he is being represented by Mr. Darcy, who is a young man working at his father's law firm. And so Lizzie is trying to solve this mystery and prove herself and like run-ins with Mr. Darcy and etc. etc. Okay, I think this is a really fun young YA version of what it is, right? I'm having an all right time reading it. I'm enjoying it. It's a very quick read. I think the person I'd recommend this to most is someone who's like 13 and has never read Pride and Prejudice, but is kind of interested in the story. Because I remember when I was young, when I was like 11, 12, I used to read like YA, like romance contemporaries almost, but like modern day retellings of Jane Austen. I loved that series. I just, I completely forgot about that series, but I remember I really enjoyed that. And so I think this is like on a similar vein where it's fairly young YA, it's introducing people to the story, but also I would recommend it if you've read Pride and Prejudice recently, right? I think it's got a lot of interesting callbacks. It's got a lot of interesting references. There's certain scenes that are being replicated in very imaginative and very interesting ways. So I think it's also fun to read if you've read it fairly recently and like can appreciate the kind of, or if you know just the just story really well and you can appreciate the kind of all the references and there's some really minor references, some really nice little nods to stuff. But I do have a couple problems with it. A, there's like, for me, no chemistry between <laughs> Lizzie and Darcy in this or nothing building between them. Having read Pride and Prejudice, I just don't know if it's fair to read this exactly straight after reading Pride and Prejudice because there's just nothing building between them for me. With Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. Pride and Prejudice has such a wonderful arc of how you're seeing both of their feelings towards one another build and change and the kind of the way the letter happens at the midpoint, etc, etc, etc. We, we're not having any of that, right? And there's also, I think there's a lot of aspects that make Pride and Prejudice, Pride and Prejudice that aren't, I think I saw a good read of you referring to this as well, that aren't in this. Like there's nothing between Mr. Bingley and Jane. There's the letter isn't happening. So I'm just a bit like, oh, you know, there's certain elements that I think this is like not trying to follow the story beat for beat, which you know, different retellings are gonna do different things, right? Some are gonna go for like a real faithful plot ad readaptation, right? This is not going for that. It's basically almost like a fan fiction, obviously like an elevated one, but like they're taking the characters, they're taking parts of the story and like reimagining it, right? It's like when you'd write, I don't know, 
other other fan fiction. Other fan fiction often just takes the characters and puts them in an entirely new situation. That's kind of what this feels like. And I just don't know if I love that, having just read Pride and Prejudice and loving it so much. I just feel like something's lacking, right? I'm not out here going, oh, you have to follow that plot beat for beat, because I also think that could be boring, right? I sometimes don't like that when it feels predictable. At least this doesn't feel predictable. But I just don't know if it's truly feeling like Pride and Prejudice for me. I don't feel like Lizzie really feels like Lizzie. I don't feel like Darcy really feels like Darcy. And I feel like the book is trying to do two things at once. I appreciate there's a murder mystery in this, but I think it's trying to both be referential of Pride and Prejudice and have a murder mystery, and it's kind of not doing them either of them really well. I'm not, like, I appreciate there's a murder mystery, but am I, like, super invested in it? And do I think that there's been a lot of, like, clues or, like, elements to the mystery? No. I feel like the mystery has kind of been forgotten whilst it's also trying to, like, build on certain character relationships that build on certain plot beats that Pride and Prejudice has, but also not doing that very well. Like, I feel like it's not doing either of them perfectly. So I am enjoying it but I'm not loving it and I have a few issues with it. So at the moment I'd say it's maybe like a 3.5 in terms of enjoyment. I'm gonna try and read the second half a lot quicker. I read the first half mainly through the audiobook and I'm gonna try and read the second half physically so I read it a lot quicker and maybe that will improve my, my reading experience of it a little bit. So we shall see, we shall see. I'm gonna try and read as much as I can and then I'll check in with you later today on my thoughts of this one and how it compares to Pride and Prejudice. It's like a couple hours later. I literally just went and sat out in the garden and finished this. And here's the thing. I'm still gonna give it a 3.5, but when I spoke to you in the last clip, it was a 3.5 leaning towards a three, and now it's a 3.5 leaning towards a four. So now it's getting rounded up on Goodreads. I much preferred the second half of this. The critique I had of like it not doing the Pride and Prejudice aspect very well, not doing the Murder Mystery aspect very well, I felt like it really came together in the second half and it had done enough kind of like setting up of both in the first half to really motor with both, whoa, <laughs> to really motor with both of those in the second half. And that was really the biggest thing I noticed was like, okay, the mystery really came together. I think the way that the mystery um, it kind of played out was very sophisticated and was very interesting. It's very interesting, you know, if you've read Pride and Prejudice, it's very interesting who the um, culprit or culprits end up being. Like, you naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> I think I am going to continue on this series. Well, there's technically like two series that spawn from this. There's two more in this like Jane Austen books as murder mystery retellings. I think there's a Sense and Sensibility and a Mansfield Park one. So I've got to read them <laughs> before I can read that. But then there's also like a Darcy and Lizzie continuation series from this. And I think I am going to give them both a go. Do I think this is like the best thing I've ever read? No, but I had a really fun time reading it. And I think if you are a fan of Pride and Prejudice, I do think this would be a book that's an enjoyable treat. But is it as good as the classic? In this case, no. In this case, no. <laughs> Not for me, personally. But I don't think this is trying to be, right? Like we said, and in this series, I think we'll uncover this more, but some retellings are trying to, like, do something new and take that story and twist it and make it modern. This is really just trying to share in the love and share in the appreciation and, like, just, just, it's for fans of Pride and Prejudice, right? I don't think it's trying to, like, one-up it. I think it's for fans of that and trying to, like, appreciate it but we found my favorite book of the year so far with this book oh my god guys i love it <laughs> i love it so much i'm like is there a world in which i can make tom read this i've tried to make him watch the bbc adaptation many times and we never like get that far i think he's watched like an episode or two but like i just don't know if he gets it you know but like i just think jane austen is the best writer to ever have existed <laughs> The mother. Not just mother, I might actually change it to the mother. I absolutely loved it. And it was very interesting. I'm excited to do this a few more times with some other classics. Reading the classic and then reading and retelling because it's such an interesting lens to read this through. I do think the reading experience is different versus like when you've read this for the first time, it's your favorite book. <laughs> of the year so far and is the classic itself. It's quite difficult for this to live up to, but I think it's still a fun reading experience to read the retelling straight after. But yeah, I am gonna give the rest of the series a go. Is it like, you know, am I like, whoa. I haven't started any series so far this year that I'm continuing that I'm like blown away by. They've both been, it was this and everyone in my family has killed someone. They're both like, okay, I can t I'm gonna continue on to see where this goes, but I haven't started any series this year yet where I'm like, whoa. Oh my god! <laughs> but I guess I'm just trying to make, I'm making more progress in series than I'm starting this year, so you know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video, reading a classic and reading retelling. I cannot recommend picking this bad boy up enough if you are interested. I already want to reread it. I'm like, what else? What am I going to read for the rest of, like, what am I going to read next that could possibly compare? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got to the end of the video, comment a love heart emoji for the love that's in the air. <laughs> And I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!